In the financial system, the total value of the average retail investor is just a fraction of the derivatives market. Within this hidden market, the big money gets to play. If they lose the bet, they just ask their friends at the Fed to print up some more. It's a win-win situation for them and a lose-lose situation for us. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about the underlying structures that exist in the financial system today. We have derivatives, whether we are looking at collateralized debt obligations, asset-backed securities, and the whole other alphabet soup of trash. And then we have high-frequency trading and dark pools. So for those who don't know about dark pools, I need to just quickly just explain what it is. Dark pools, a type of alternative trading system giving investors the opportunity to place orders and make trades without publicly telegraphing their intentions until the sale has been executed. All right. They are mostly used by institutional investors for block trades involving a large number of securities. Okay, that's the explanation. And then I want to get into this article right now. Dark pool caps curb trading in hundreds of stocks. All right. Now I'm going to explain why this is important. Okay. Look at this. Barclays, Unilever, and Nestle are among the hundreds of European equities that exceed the MIFID2 limits on dark pool trading, triggering restrictions on how they're bought and sold. So right away, there is restrictions in place. These stocks are going to be affected. You're going to have those who are trading back and forth using high frequency trading or just traditional methods. They are also going to lose profits because of this. So what do they do? Well, of course, they just find a way around. The affected contracts will be suspended for six months from being traded in dark pools, which investors use to avoid tipping their hand to the markets. These equities, the equities must instead be traded on rival venues or through new methods after the curb start on March 12th. And they're saying that they're going to have to use traditional stock exchanges and new platforms run by the banks and high-speed traders will probably gain business as a result. So what are they going to do? Well, I'll show you. This article is out of Bloomberg, by the way. Traders who want to keep their trades hidden will still have options. They can deal massive blocks of stocks that qualify for an exemption from the ban, use a new breed of venues called systematic internalizers or use periodic auctions that hide orders until there is enough volume to trigger a trade. They haven't even come up with the problem and they already have the solution to it. It's insane. These dark pools were a problem to begin with and they put a small little restriction in there affecting you know a small portion and they already found a way around we know that all of the different markets that are out there whether it's derivatives markets and everything else that i explained at the beginning is simply a you know it it's waiting to fail it will and of course it will be deemed too big to fail because all of this is interconnected. Many people don't realize that. They see one company or they see, you know, one type of investment and think that it can be contained in that. And that is absolutely not the case. Operators of some of Europe's biggest dark pools, London Stock Exchange Group, PLC, and so on, have set up periodic auctions which have all the benefits of dark trading but technically take place on lit markets. They've also been encouraging fund managers to submit bigger orders that aren't affected by the bans. There are signs that investors are already embracing the new ways of dealing. That's it. That's it. Seen a major increase in trading on its periodic auction service since the first day they introduced this. Immediately, 
the first day they introduce more regulations, they found their way around. Do you think for a second that they are not going to be able to get around any of these silly little, you know, walls they put in place? Of course. They'll leap over. They'll go to the sides. They'll dig underneath. Whatever they got to do, they'll find their way. So that's dark pools, and that is the next level, periodic auctions. And this, unfortunately, is something that they can do. They can expand and expand and expand, and then ultimately something fails, and you and I are on the hook. The dark and the lit. European equities traded in the dark as a percentage of overall trading. So here we are, financial crisis time frame. And look at this. Continuously increasing year after year after year. That should be very concerning to us because these are what they use to manipulate these are what they use to increase their profits at our expense. There is no reason why this should be allowed ever. Ever. Everything should be transparent. But it's not. And it's funny because you and I have to abide by every little rule. Look, you go and try to take a few thousand dollars out of the bank and you see what happens. They're giving you the 20 questions. They tell you, no, 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 we don't have that kind of money. Come back in three days. That's the way that they act towards us. But if you are Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, you could do whatever the hell you want and get away with it. All right. This is just an example I found here. Remember all these mortgage-backed securities? A lot of people still, after the financial crisis, they still don't understand derivatives and how they work. You as an individual, you bought your home, all right? But you have this mortgage that's attached to it, right? Mortgage. And that mortgage, however much it is, let's just say it's, it's uh, you know, $1, all right? $1 mortgage. That $1 mortgage with the bank isn't held at the bank. They take it and they put it into a security. So investors buy that dollar of mortgage and they use it and connect it in with all of these other mortgages. Yeah, sure, a lot of them are subprime and a lot of them might fail, but it's okay because we have a lot of them. So we don't need to worry because it's diversified, because they are from all over the United States, potentially all over the world. And we know what happened. We need to have everything very visible. See, it's funny because this information about derivatives wasn't starting to come out until the whole subprime started to crack. And then we started to find out. And now today we're bringing up this information. Same things are happening. It's worse, actually. Euro jumps, yields rise after the ECB's comments, all right? What did they say? Well, the market is moving on this individual's comments that suggest there could be a 20 basis point move on the deposit rate rather than a 10 basis point step up. Wow. And that's why the market's moved up. That's why this euro was able to jump. Right here, the ECB, 2.55 trillion euro in bond buying, would apparently be wound down by the end of this year. Oh, sure. They're going to get rid, somehow, of 2.55 trillion euro worth. That's not going to happen. 
you've seen it come up, and how in the world are they ever going to taper this off? How when they've come up so far? I'll show you a chart, in fact, here. And I put it somewhere right here. Take a look at this. The Fed, you've seen that minimal tapering. The ECB, slowing down here. But look at where it has come from. I don't think that people realize this. You could see other central banks increasing. Bank of England, are they tapering or is that simply continuing? Swiss National Bank, of course, they have been printing like crazy. Bank of Japan will never stop. And ultimately, if you take them all and you put them together, even if the Fed tapered, even if the ECB tapered, we still have central banks printing a hell of a lot of money. And if you increase by 20 basis points, what do you think you're doing? Do you think you're going to have any sort of you know, difference or change in that? Of course not. Very quickly here, the ruble took a significant fall here in just a short period of time. You could see that for yourself right here. Obviously, the tension is going on right now, back and forth with the U.S. And this is one that you should follow regularly. It's an index which I found interesting, Knight Frank Luxury Investment Index. So we can see this is, is good because... We're not looking at stocks or bonds or real estate, okay? We are looking at these luxury investments. And that's important to note. So you'll see here, art, in fact, over the last year, increased 21%. Over the last 10 years, 78%. Look at wine. Classic cars up 334% over the last 10 years, and it goes on. And essentially, what we can see here is that the luxury investments, in particular art and wine, have increased significantly over the past year. Looking at watches, coins, jewelry, etc., over the last year, they probably have outperformed a lot of different assets out there. Perhaps not, you know, the S&P 500, for example, but still, that would be considered a pretty good return. If you can get 4 to 5%, if you're a traditional, you know, wealth management company, they, they would say 5% is, is a good return. So this here, we can see what is happening to the, those luxury investments. You also have to factor in, you know, the different assets out there. Don't just look at the traditional ones, okay? It's important. And then just to look at that as an index, rich index, quote unquote, you'll see that fine wine, luxury watches, and art consistently rising. It has been, you know, a little up and down just recently, but you can see where it has gone over the past year, and I think that's all along the same lines of the bull market that we are experiencing in real estate, in um, you know, in, in equities and everything else. All right, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. And if you found this video informative, I know that you will find my books. The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. All you have to do is go over to Amazon. Links are in the description below. Take care.